one in 360 has become two in 360 with the news that Jessica will go to Eurovision 2018 with Jennifer, J to the J. A little bit of rap there for you. In any case, are you guys ready to talk about it? Let's do, do this. this. What, what? Yes, one in three sixty has finally decided, and Jessica is going from Malta to San Marino to Portugal. Just to kick this off, I'm really happy for her. She's been trying for so long in Malta. She's got an amazing voice, and it's so amazing that her dream is finally coming true. It's gonna make me teary, y'all, because she's one of these stars we've all loved for a very long time. She came to the Wee Wee Jam in uh, Malta in November during Junior Eurovision a few years ago. She's a wonderful person, and I'm so excited to see that flame red hair in Portugal. Now, we gotta talk about the song. And this is where it gets trickier, because I love Jessica, so I don't want, I don't want anyone to take this as me dissing her, because I'm not dissing her. The song is not good. This rap interlude, I, I wrote down the text. It's me, Jenny B, what you get is what you see. If they're dissing you on Twitter, don't get bitter. I'm not gonna get bitter. I'm gonna get real, real sad that San Marino is throwing away its shot at going to the Eurovision final. No jury is gonna respect this song. I'm sorry, no jury is gonna respect this song. You need to revamp the hell out of it to have any chance. I mean, it's good that um, Germany, where Jennifer is from, Malta and Italy are all voting in this uh, semi-final that they're in, so that's great. The song is just beneath them. I'm sorry, we'll get to Sarah de Blue later. Her song was amazing. I'm gonna try to focus on this song for now. This song is just not good enough. I'm sorry, it's not. Maybe it's because they had to write like five million songs in like a two day period or something. Or like they had this songwriting camp and it was very rushed. I just don't understand. I really don't understand. They're two talented performers. This song is doing nothing for me, Angus. I actually don't um, necessarily think the song itself is that bad. I think it is quintessentially Maltese in the way it's put together. Like it sounds very Malta at Eurovision. This is very kind of Glenn Bala. Or, I mean, like, it could be a Brooke Borg song. That's the kind of vibe that I get from it. It sounds very Brooke Borg. Um, it's like that same kind of, like, soaring, mid-tempo dance pop. But, like, Malta seems to churn out in, like, mass volumes because every other song at Malta Eurovision Song Contest sounds exactly like this. Um, but it's soaring mid-tempo. The opening lyric is possibly one of the bleakest I've ever heard at Eurovision. Bullied from the moment we were born. Which is, like, I mean, that's right up there with... Um, Aaron, who writes her as well, put it out on Twitter. That's right it there with, like, Jamala in terms of, like, <laughs> strangers come, they kill you all and say we're not guilty. Like, it's a very bleak start for what becomes a happy song. The rap itself I don't have too many problems with. I think um, Robin said it reminds her of Mel B's rap from the Spice Girls track Wannabe, which is really true. And uh, I'm not kind of, like, childish, like, here's the story from AC stuff. That actually, uh, I mean, A, like, that song sold, like, millions of records. This isn't going to sell millions of records, but I can see why, like, like that kind of cheesy rap approach could do well. Um, do well I at think, Eurovision? Um, I mean, I think it means more is what I would say. It's like, I don't think it's like a necessarily a bad song. I just think uh, it needs some more like pizzazz or sparkle to it. Mm. That's my general feeling. Fair, fair. I like it. <laughs> I like it. No, that's good. This is so unlike you. Yeah, this is usually not your cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I like it. I don't know if it's like a fever dream because after five or six months, this hellish what the hell is going on selection is finally mm. over. Um, or whether it's the fact that I, I, I think it might be the fact that I'm just glad Jessica is going because I love her. I've loved so many of her MESC entries. Um, the rap is going to be one of those iconic like San Marino at Eurovision moments I feel like like <sighs> with Michele Perniola's no like this is the next thing or Serhat doing disco and it's mm. it's quintessential San Marino don't quite get Eurovision but they're gonna do what they want to do this year and it's the same thing every time like oh it's just bizarre and I kind of I kind of love it um it's not going to do well. I mean, it, it will do well with some people. It's going to get 24 points from Malta. Like, I think, hands down, I think it's going to get four <laughs> points from Malta from the jury in the televote. Um, but, yeah, it's just... 
it's bizarre. Um, but it, it, his thing is, I remember it. And I, that, that it, there's something about it that, that hooked me from the first time I heard it. I listened to all the studio versions and I was like, that was the only one that stood out. Sarah De Blue didn't stick in my head. Jennifer's other song didn't. None of the other ones did. This was the only one that really stuck out for me. So I don't know whether I've had a couple of blows to the head and I've not realised or something, but I'm not that unhappy about this. Um, ask me again in the morning and I might say something different. But yeah, I, I'm i glad and I can't wait to see it in Lisbon, which I didn't think I would say. You know what? I've got 10 toes. I don't think about any of them. Then I run into a door, break one of them. It's all I can think about. The pain, the agony. I just, I really feel upset for Jessica because Jessica's amazing and deserves to go to Eurovision with a kick-ass song. And this is not the song. She's worked so hard for so long. Her other songs in Malta were all better than this. And then she has to go sing this one. The Jennifer B thing. Jennifer clearly has attitude and sass and that's great. There's personality. She's going to own that 20 seconds where she's featuring. She's going to own it. But a part of me is like, when Errol dropped out, couldn't they have just deleted this bit from the song and let Jessica just sing the song? It's almost... <sighs> yeah, I'm sure they will make the most of this. I'm sure that, you know, Serhat, I hated when his video came out. I was so negative. And then at Eurovision, you kind of fall in love with him. Or we did that kind of fell in love with him. His song, I'll still listen to if it comes to my iPod. So, you know, my negativity, I'm not trying to say there's no hope on planet Earth for this. I'm just saying I felt personally that Sarah DeBlue, her live vocal, she killed it. She can sing. She brought the studio cut to life. I think it's a weird system where people can tie with the televote because they each raise the money. They should have devised a different system so we could have a more precise measurement. It would have been more fair, I think. Um, in any case, I think that without an LED, it could be hard to elevate this. Like if you have an LED, you can elevate pretty much anything. <laughs> With this, I don't know how you're going to elevate it. Like, put Jennifer in some parachute pants and, and a gold chain. I prefer Pitbull <laughs> on the floor, J-Lo. This is not that level. Rap at Eurovision does not do well. I think Errol stood the best chance of making rap work at Eurovision. I'm going to stop hating, and I'm going to start loving, and pass the baton over to you. Your other thoughts? Um, well, I will say, I mean, I think there's... In terms of the other acts, obviously Sarah was really good. We love Emma. Emma Sandstrom is just wonderful. She always has been. Um, I, I want her to get her shot at Eurovision. And I think, I don't know, I don't want to say like she would say that these weren't necessarily good songs suited to her, but I don't think the songs were suited to her. Like Diamonds was fine, but it, the production wasn't right for her. Um, I will say... The thing is, is that we can't ignore the fact that there is a lot of controversy and, you know, the televote kind of played into that. And then the jury vote, there is controversy around both Jennifer and Sarah um, to, to a degree. Um, you know, people saying, oh, well, Sarah knows the Straubs. Zoe wasn't voting. So that kind of cleared that. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, there's discussion about producers and people that were involved one in 360. At this point, like. I think it's pointless almost talking about it at this point because this is what's going to go to Eurovision. Like, they're not going to suddenly change their mind at this point. Um, and I think that people should just kind of let that happen. I think the entire selection has been just... It's just been one kind of weird moment after the other. And the fact that even their official Twitter started doing things like, oh, it's another one in 360 drama. Like, that's not... That doesn't reflect well... Um, I and mean, I think all the people that are involved with it have been really lovely. Like I know yes. Nick and Kristen, they are really lovely people. Um, it, it just seems like it's been one of those things where Eurovision fans have enjoyed the drama and therefore, you know, that this is the end result seems a bit weird. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I just think that there's been a lot happening with it and I'm excited to see what they bring at Eurovision is the thing. I, I don't know what it will be. I don't know how much money they'll have behind it, but Jessica Start will- Start a crowdfunding there. campaign. Get some more. Yeah, Let's make it work. Um, but no, Jessica will get her three minutes at Eurovision or two minutes 40 plus a wrap. And that's that's good because I don't know whether she would ultimately win MESC. She might do a Claudia Faniello and eventually win it. But I kind of feel like, you know what, do it now. And then she might represent Malta again. Who knows? But yeah, I'm- um, it's just weird. It's been a very weird selection. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I think Chris, it's nail head. It's been totally chaotic as, like, a show, but equally, is that unusual for Eurovision selection shows? There are plenty of them that work in weird and mysterious ways. <laughs> um, have there been, like, some questionable problems with the voting? Yes, but again, that's not unusual for Eurovision selections. We've seen it happen a lot. Like, it happens a lot generally. This year, it's happened a lot as well. That's in the past. I think the main priority is, like, the song itself, from my perspective, it's fine. Can we put a revamp on it? Yes, and that might help to elevate things. Equally, I don't necessarily know that we should always bank on there being a revamp. I think sometimes you just have to wait with the turd you're given and sprinkle glitter as much as you can once you get it onto the stage. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, I think... To me, it, like, I very much get the vibes of this as, like, at being a Maltese Eurovision entry of maybe, like, five or two, like, five or six yesteryears. It's a little bit behind the pace, but, you know, let's see what happens with the stage show. I think the fact there aren't going to be screens this year will make the whole competition a little bit different to uh. see what people put on stage. And, yeah, like, the song itself, I don't actually dislike it. Um, this kind of soaring middling dance pop. It could be the kind of thing that sneaks through with the juries. Like, I don't think the last time San Marino made the final, like, that was a very borderline thing that clipped its way through. Uh... <laughs> Girl, I ain't no jury voting for this. I ain't no jury voting for this. I don't know. I just, I don't see it as being terminally bad, is what I would say. The performers are good. That... The performers are very good. Yeah. Like, yeah. So they can sell what they have. Like, you know, sometimes you go to a, a store, a thrift shop or something, you don't want to buy that ugly plaid dress. But then the person is like, ooh, this makes you look so good. You got to wear this plaid dress. And then you buy the damn plaid dress. So if they can sell what they've got, I, and I do wish them the best. I've enjoyed one in 360 immensely because drama is what gives it life. Angus, you and I went to Melfest together in 2015. We interviewed Christian Bjorkman and he said, Melfest is a soap opera. The drama is good. People want more. And it becomes this event. You wait for the next storyline. And like, San Marino gave us that this year, and I hope they do it again. Although I do hope they tweak the vote. They need to figure out the voting, the financing, and all of that stuff, because it just, it, it starts to look weird, and people start to talk, and it distracts. But they've got some, a good concept here that they can build on for the future. And now we can all wait and see how Eurovision goes. I'm not optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that they managed to pull the show off, so maybe they can pull off a revamp or a, a big surprise. Final question yeah. before we go. Do you think this is a definite qualifier, a borderline qualifier, or most likely not qualifying Angus? Um, I want to consult who's in their semi-final quickly before I forecast this. <laughs> They're <laughs> in the a... semi-final two. They're in the one with like Russia, with Azerbaijan, with like I'm, Belgium. That, with Canada, Honestly, like... I am so in like national final season mode that like I don't even know most of the selected ones. Let's see who we got here. Oh, okay. This this I can see. Yeah, yeah, we're not. <laughs> no. um, you know what? I think this is actually on the borderline for the semi-final that it was in. Looking at it now, I would say, <laughs> like I don't know, maybe everyone's going to violently disagree. I, I do not think this is as bad as you're making out, Will. I have to say, and I think looking at some of like there are a couple of definites, but I think that semi-final there are a lot of people that are up in the air for it coming to say. So I mean, like some people will crash and burn, some people will soar. This could do either of those things, I think. I mean, I, they're in, like, Romania, Norway, Romania, Norway, Moldova, Russia, Serbia, Denmark, Sweden, Latvia, Poland, Ukraine. Like, there's so many that are going to be ahead of this, I think. Like, I would almost love to see it. Yeah. I would almost love to see it in the final, just for the, oh, my God, everybody is seeing what's happening here. Um, but I can't see it qualifying. I think it's got, it definitely does have points coming towards it, mm. but there's going to be nowhere near enough, I'd have thought. Um, but again, I, I, I wish them the best is the main right. thing. I think they'll be really fun on the Eurovision promo tour. Hey, oh, y'all, I'm yeah. going to do the interview. I'm going to keep it real. I love these ladies. I just don't like the song. We can talk about something else. I think that at the moment they have an uphill battle. They're down here on my like bone thing, joint. And the semi-final qualifications up here, I wish them the best. I think it's going to be tough. But they have a crafty team, a creative team, so maybe they can... For yeah. me, the best result will be for Jessica to go. It endears her to Maltese people even more. And then she re-enters MESC wins and goes to Eurovision and slays. 
Yeah. Because I'm sorry, Claudia Finello had Jenna. a better song than this, and she did not advance to uh, the final at Eurovision. I don't see this going to the final at Eurovision. I'm sorry, San Marino has less voting power than Malta. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they have the toughest situation. They're San Marino. And Italy doesn't even vote for them, do they? So it's... No, um, yeah. In any case, that is what we think. What do you think? Are you feeling optimistic about the collaboration between Jessica and Jennifer? Do you like the rap section? How would you tweak the song? And how do you want this stage? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. Make sure to give this video a like. And subscribe to our channel so you get all the great content. And let us know what you think in the comments below. And we will see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.